So you're changing your power supply because you want that beefy graphics card to frag and to shoot and to kill everything that comes on your screen or maybe there is nothing on your screen and you want to replace that power supply because your computer is dead. Now anyhow, I will show you how to do that in this video. So this is our patient for today. We're going to change the power supply in this one because the power supply in this PC is completely <coughs> dead. Uh, I'm going to show you how to remove the power supply and also how to remove the cables from the motherboard without breaking anything because some of these connections are pretty fragile. So you have to be a bit careful when you are pulling out the cables. So yeah, let's do this. Right, so I'm going to use my trusty Windows 10 pen. <laughs> the rhymes, Windows 10 pen, Windows 10 pen, focus, that's Windows 10 pen. So starting off with the biggest one, this one, this big guy right here to the right of the memory. Uh, this one comes off pretty easily. So just, there's a little clip over here, which you have to push over here. I know, I don't think it's very clear. I'm gonna give you a quick shot with my smartphone so you can see which clip I mean. All right, I'm gonna quickly zoom in on this clip. So the clip I mean is this one right here. This clip. This is a little clip. We have to push the clip in order to get this cable out. And then just pull. And there we have the 24 pin uh, adapter. It might come in a 20 pin if you have an old PC. See, but this separates and the older types of power supply only had 20 pins. The newer ones have a 24 pin uh, and have this little addition to them. The next one is the eight pin. The eight pin can be found next to the processor. I have seen motherboards where the eight pin is somewhere over here. Or, I don't know, maybe, I haven't seen them over there. They can be at any place, but most likely it will be uh, on the top left corner of your motherboard. So the same principle goes for the 8-pin power supply. Uh, so the, th the same thing goes for the 8-pin adapter. Just the same thing, there's this clip on top, which you have to push and pull. And it comes off just like that. Now in order to remove the other cables, like the ones for the DVD drive and the hard drives, uh, we should probably first remove these zip ties. Now it's possible that there are no zip ties in your PC, but if there are, it's better to remove them first, make sure you don't cut any cables, just the zip ties. This is our cable mess. All this has to go out. And the only way to do that is by loosening up these four screws over here. Okay, take this one out. And there we have it. So when looking for a power supply, you're better off picking something that has more than enough juice instead of just enough. Because just enough now nah, you're always pushing the power supply to its limits and I like the fact that the power supply is working comfortably at uh, like 70% of its capacity at maximum. But now you're probably thinking like, hey, but this one says 600 and this one says 550. Hmm. Now you must know that this power supply was an old power supply and this PC was also recently upgraded which basically means that the components in there are newer. 
Now newer components are less power consuming than old components. So this power supply was used uh, powering old components and 600 watts was more than adequate to power new components because the new components are, as I said before, less power consuming. So I guess that 550 watts was more than enough for uh, this particular system. Uh, and this is also the modular power supply. I'm going to explain you in a minute what a modular power supply is. Uh, but really, I think 550 was more than enough. So what is a modular power supply? Now, this says it all. If you put these two next to each other, first of all, you can see <laughs> this one is also a lot smaller, but that doesn't really have anything to do with it being a modular power supply. Um, as you can see, this power supply has only a few of the most important cables. Actually only two. So this is actually only two cables to power the PC. Uh, it is the cable, the 24 pin and the eight pin. And in the non-modular power supply, we can see it, it has all these cables, the spaghetti of cables that is so frustrating to work with. So I'd rather throw this in the garbage and only use this because it's so clean and you just pick the cables that you need. Actually, I need to flip it like this. As you can see, we have separate connections for the peripherals and SATA. Now, what is peripherals and SATA? Those are actually these cables. This is the SATA cable. Why are you not focusing? So this is a SATA cable. This is to power your hard drives, uh, your optical drives, and the power supply has a separate uh, connection. Over here, as the six pins. And it's also used for the Molex adapters. Uh, and the Molex adapters are these adapters, are these connections actually. The Molex connections are these connections, which are actually no longer used. Anybody who's still using these, um, for components that is, because often it's still used, like in this case, it is used to power the uh, fans of the, P of the PC. Uh, but it is actually no longer in use. It was used to power hard drives and uh, also optical drives back in the day, but it's no longer the standard for those things since they now uh, are powered using a SATA power adapter. So I will probably only need one cable of this to power uh, the two fans in the case. The 6 plus 2 PCIe adapters that's to power that is used to power video cards and also it can be used to power the cpu it says right here but since we already have the adapter on the separate cable we will not be needing that one so that's what the pcie adapter looks like is this six pin it is this six pin adapter that actually an eight pin adapter that breaks up into a six pin and a two pin. Normally a lot of video cards use the six pin, but more power demanding video cards will use the eight pin. So this might be a good time to clean the PC of any dust. Uh, you can use a vacuum cleaner or a little uh, brush for that, whatever you'd want, uh, because the less dust that the power supply can collect, the better it is for the power supply. And here. Now there's a lot of discussion on how you should mount the power supply and you should be mounting it like this or you should be mounting it like that. You should be mounting it wherever the fan has the most airflow. Uh, there are some cases that have like uh, little breathing holes or like a, a, a sort of mesh cover uh, on the bottom of the case. But if you don't have that, if it is just plain metal, you should turn the fan upwards because uh, that way the fan can have the most air intake uh, so the power supply is cooled the best way. So once again just 
fasten the screws. All right, you know the drill. The 24 pin goes over here, but instead of pulling it out, you're just putting it in. So it's the same cables. They all look exactly the same. Uh, if you were a kid and you were into Legos, well, building PCs is pretty much like Legos. Just take the one end of the cable and put it inside the power supply. And the other end just goes into the peripherals. In this case, a hard drive. An SSD drive. And an optical drive. Ah, this looks so much clearer. I like it. Now in the first part of the video, I left this video card out. Uh, but I'm going to put it back in right now because this guy is a gamer, so he likes to play video games on his PC. And I'm just going to put it in right over here. Part. For the graphics card, just do the same thing. Uh, just use the other cable and plug it in just the way we did with the peripherals. Now, of course, you cannot leave the cables the way they are. You have to tidy it a little bit up. This power supply came with zip ties and I'm going to use it to bind all the cables together. So everything is in place. I connected all the cables and I used the zip ties to tie the cables a bit together. Now, this is not my best work of um, cable management, but you know, it's an old case and it doesn't have a lot of um, cable management options here. So you know, I had to work with whatever I had. Besides, it's not that important because the only airflow uh, that uh, is being created is over here. And as you can see, uh, this space here is clear. There is no uh, there is no fan on the front. There is only two fans on the one on the top and one on the rear. So it doesn't really matter. So yeah, now time to fire up the machine and see if it's booting. But first, so dirty, 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 dirty. All right, the moment of truth. One thing is make sure you. Switch the back of the power supply before turning the PC on. All right, so that's good. We get power here. Oh, so it's wrong. Maybe I should turn on the monitor. <laughs> All right, so it's booting, perfect. Nice. So I hope everything was clear for you and that you were able to replace your power supply, whether it being to install a new graphics card or just to make sure that your PC is working again. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.